here. Welcome to the University of Iowa in the second session of the Women's Gymnastics Championships. This is what happened earlier in the afternoon session with the fifth through eight seeds. Michigan, the leader of the pack and setting the pace so far. So theoretically, we now have five teams now in contention to win a Big Ten title. Michigan from the afternoon session and now the top four teams we will see here competing tonight. When you talk about championships, you talk about Big Ten championships. Our analyst all season long, Kylie Kaloric, who is Kylie Bowder in that Michigan, she knows a thing or two, won three individual titles, was the 2011 Gymnast of the Year, and she won four team championships with the University of Michigan. She joins us here again. What did you take away from watching the teams this afternoon? It really came down to the last rotation, so it was fun for me to watch. Every team here tonight knows the score they need to beat. And Michigan has to sit and watch. The Wolverines now in the building. They'll watch teams like Nebraska, the new kids on the block, in the top seed here tonight. They are the top seed. They won Big 12s last year, so I think they're looking to make a name for themselves this year. Penn State has 11 second place finishes at Big Ten, so I think they're chomping at the bit to win one of their own. They are certainly anxious to get that title. When you when you think about all-arounders and good all-around competition, we have two of the top ones here in the country and in the conference. We do. Sharia Musser is only a junior out of Penn State. She's an All-American. She's won six Big Ten Gymnast of the Week awards, and she's definitely going to help her team in this competition tonight. Jesse Dezeal is a freshman from Nebraska. She has won nine Big Ten Freshman of the Week awards out of ten. She is definitely going to be a contender in the all-around competition. Should be fun. The trophy is in the building. Now we just have to crown a champion. A first rotation coming up next. BTN Women's Gymnastics is brought to you by Alpha Factor. Compete with confidence. Competing with confidence is exactly what the Michigan Wolverines did back inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. And look who made it into the building for the evening session. We see head coach Bev Plocky sitting there. And earlier I caught up with her to talk about her team being the leaders after session one. Well, coach, this came down to the final rotation. What did you tell your team? What was the message this afternoon? You know, we just really wanted to come in here and try to enjoy the experience and have fun. Um, you know, a young team and, you know, for my two freshmen, their first championship, and, and that's what we did. And I thought that we continued to get better. Obviously, after vault, that was a great adrenaline boost going into the last event. And I just said, you know, just do bars the way we do them. You find yourself in a situation you've never been in now. You've got to sit and watch to see if you're going to be champion. How does that feel? Well, I mean, it's a little nerve-wracking. Um, you know, it, this is the way it's done at the national championship, so we've been in an afternoon session before and, and uh, had to sit and wait for the evening as well. But, you know, there's a lot of good teams in the Big Ten and great competition, and we'll just have to see how it finishes. All right, and kicking our action off is Sierra Thompson, the freshman from Minnesota on the floor. Nice leaps we see as we join her floor team. Minnesota thrilled to be here, coming on strong the very last weekend to get to the top four spots here and make it to the evening session. Nice front layout, front fold. Sierra Thompson, an all-arounder, competing in the all-around all but two weeks this year. Sierra has a nice variety of tumbling in this floor team. We didn't see her opening pass, but it was a double backflip. Middle pass in combination, and this last pass, she's going to end twisting. Two and a half. A little bit sitting down when she lands, but takes a step and saves it. So Sierra Thompson wraps things off here, Minnesota on the floor, Ohio State on the beam, Nebraska on the bars, and Penn State on the vault here in this first rotation. Minnesota, as I mentioned, didn't really even know if it would be in the evening session or the afternoon session. It really came down to their meet in Denver, and it really came down to, Coach Meg Stevenson said, the, the last event in the, in, in the vault. 
down in Denver. She said, I didn't even want to know where we were at. My assistant knows exactly where we're at, and I leave it up to her as we look at Meg Stevenson here, who said, you know, like I said, her team is thrilled to actually be competing here in the evening session. Her third year as the solo head coach. She was co-head coaches with her husband, Jim. We go over to Ohio State, Carrie Fagan, in her seventh year. She was last year's Big Ten Coach of the Year. Any given night, she says, we can be our best and do our best. Two of the four head coaches here competing tonight. Minnesota, the fourth seed. Ohio State is the third. Nebraska is the top seed. Penn State is the second seed. Hopping over to the bars. And Nebraska, and there is head coach Dan Kendig. The new kid's on the block, the number one seed. He's in his 19th season. He felt different kind of walking in, he said, walking into the building. You know, new conference, a new title to chase. He said last year at this time, they would have been saying, we want to win a Big 12 championship again next year. Now they're in the Big 10, and they want a Big 10 championship. Talk about big time performer. How about freshman Jesse DeZeal? This is our first look at the talented freshman. One of five all-arounders here for Nebraska. At one point, Dan Kendig sent six all-arounders. He had never done that in his coaching career. He's got five here tonight. Here's DeZeal. Jesse starts off with a blind into a pike dagger. Nice height on that release move. Fail handstand. Continues the routine. She has a beautiful tuck full out dismount. And a stick. And a stick it was. Jesse DeZeal. We'll have to take another look at that dismount. It was so good. Knees are together the whole time. Toes are pointed the whole time. Moments ago, Whitney Benchko for Penn State on the vault, a second team all Big Ten honoree. Whitney does a Yurchenko full. Woo! Wow. Wow. It's like glue on that match. She actually tied a season high in that, a 9.850. We head over to the vault with Colleen Dean. Dean on the beam. Starts off with a switch leap, split half. Has a season high on the beam of 9.925. Colleen Dean, the only all-arounder competing for Ohio State tonight. She was first team all Big Ten last year, not honored this year. And her head coach says that leaves her with something to prove tonight. A few balance checks here from Colleen. It's a little bit nerve-wracking to start such an important competition on beam, but coach said the last time they started on beam this season was in West Virginia, and it was their highest beam score of the season. Heading back to the floor, we check in with Kylie Sherman, a freshman for Minnesota. She will compete in three events, won't do bars. Career high from Kylie is 985. She's going to open up this routine with a front Rudy punch layout step out. Very nicely done. Graceful gymnast, but definitely has that edge to her floor team. Sherman out of Lakeville North in Lakeville, Minnesota. Double pike for her second tumbling pass. 
its nice height. Minnesota does its best, probably like a lot of teams. Their head coach says when they have fun, they have their best beats. No better way to start out and have fun than on the floor. Her final pass, here it comes. Nice double tap. Chest a little bit low on the landing, but overall, great routine for Kylie. Kylie Sherman wrapping things up. A high five from her teammates. Heading over to the vaults. One of the top gymnasts we'll see all night is Madison Merriam, a junior for Penn State. Merriam does a Yurchenko layout path. Little hop. Nice height, nice distance. Heading back over to the bars for Nebraska. Janelle Giblin. She's in the fifth spot for the Huskers. One of those all-arounders, a first-team All-Big Ten honoree, very talented. One bar is nine out of 10 weeks. Blind full pirouette into a beautiful ginger, immediate overshoot. Janelle's ranked second in the nation on this event. Here's up, has a tough dismount. <laughs> you can see why. <laughs> Great routine from Janelle. Janelle Giblin. Very talented gymnast in Janelle Giblin. Another very talented gymnast in Sherea Musser. This is a flashback to last year. Tied for first on the vault. She anchors all the events for Penn State, and here she is. A first look at her tonight. Beautiful vault. She, get, she has such power on that vault. Didn't stick it like we saw from last year's Big Tens. Opens up, just has that straight body the whole time in the air, but has to take that little hop but is where even, she'll get deducted. Even like the tiny little hop when Muster does it, almost looks graceful. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but she will get deducted. I, I understand it. that, I understand that, but she even looks good on the little hops. We're in the evening session here at the University of Iowa. Laura Evanstad, a senior, is the last to go on bars here for Nebraska. Tonight, she is competing on two events. Blindfold pirouette into a blind half, straddle Jaeger. Season high is 9925. The Huskers have used her as an all-arounder. Gears up for her dismount. She does a tuck full out. Step dismount. And oh man. Coach says they love this rotation that they drew, bars being first. They are coming to play. Over on the beam, Allie Marone, a senior out of British Columbia. Really neat mount here. I love it. She's very different. You don't see that very often. No. Allie's season high on beam is a 9.9. .9. That's an emoji. It's almost like an Arabian. Back handspring. Unique skill. Flip up layout series, a little bit of a balance check. Marona to British Columbia, the interesting story with her, she graduated high school in 07, wasn't planning on going to a four year college. She went to a junior college, she started actually coaching and started training again. Found out that she was actually better than she was previously. Doesn't always happen. So here she is competing, she's got some bloodlines and ties to Ohio State. So she is with the Scarlet and Gray tonight.
Here we see a cat leap into a front aerial. Another slight balance check. None of these are very big deductions, both of them maybe being up to a tenth, but they all add up in the end. And double, on her dismount. double twist, dismount, and she sticks it. Heading back over to Minnesota, Dusty Russell's routine just began here. The sophomore from Ashkash. Great opening pass, a front Rudy punch layout, step out. I mentioned too, we got that score for Laura Evanstad tying a career high over on the bars for Nebraska, 9-9-2-5. So far the hardest, hard, the highest score we have seen here tonight. Jesse's second pass, with double pike. Opens up at the right time. In the last five years, Minnesota hasn't finished any better than fourth. So they're looking to change that here tonight. The other, the other thing too about the Gophers is they're the only team not to get a Big Ten All-Conference honor. And Meg Stevenson said, that also gives us something to prove here a little bit. Now, now this year it was decided by the RQS. So we see Russell wrapping up her routine. But she also said last weekend at Denver, there was not one single event winner, but they won the meet. A bunch of superstars, they call themselves, and a decent crowd that showed up here tonight to cheer on Minnesota, the team of superstars. Beautiful last tumbling pass, whipped to double full. And a splits for the ending. Nicole Crowder for Ohio State. Just get on the beam. She is the star of the Buckeyes on the beam. Solid as a rock on this event. Little bounce check there on a sheet jump. Ohio State's been rocking on the beam this year. Their season high is a 49.5. Crowder, one of the captains in the fifth spot. You see her teammates there kind of stay in that corral there. That's one of the rules that are different here with the Big Ten Championships. Normally they can kind of line the apparatus and cheer their teammates on. They are strict with those rules as well. <laughs> you know firsthand, huh? I do. And a cool combination there. She did the front aerial into a gainer full dismount. And we head back to Janelle Campbell on the floor for Minnesota. Junior. One of two events for Campbell tonight. We'll also see her on the bars. Starts off the routine with a double pike, overdoes it a little bit, has to lift up that front leg to stay in bounds. If they don't stay in bounds, that's a one-tenth deduction if they go outside of that white tape you see there. This camera's eighth time on the floor out of 13 meets. Nice combination pass, front layout, front fold. When talking to Meg about choreographing these routines, she said this was a fun one because she's known as a graceful dancer. And this is a little bit more funky and out of the ordinary for her, but it took her a little while, but she's used to it, and she looks great doing it. Taking a final breath before her last tumbling pass. Pull and a half, punch, pike front, and she sticks it. Minnesota having a good time on the floor. So are their fans. 
Heading back over to the beam at Ohio State, Sarah Miller just hopped on, the sophomore. First team all Big Ten selection for the second straight year. Powerful gymnast. That was a great combination. Switch leap, straddle jump, back pipe. Front aerial, back tuck. She won beam against the number two team in the country, Oklahoma, in the last meet of the regular season. Nationally fifth, dealing with that chronic back injury, but who's not dealing with injuries, right? Nobody that I've heard of. <laughs> Toss to one foot. How tough is that? <laughs> I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Landing on tough. one foot on anything. <laughs> Whoa. Sarah Miller ending things with style. Man, oh man. Some painted face fans in the crowd cheering her on. The Buckeyes come strong competing and they come strong in the stance too. Look at that one foot landing and she holds it. She just has a lot of acro series in that routine. And we'll take a look at her dismount. Gain her full to a stick. All right, Sarah Miller in the sixth spot, the anchor spot coming up big time. First rotation done, we got three more to go. A champion around the corner. BTN goes where you want and when you want it with BTN to go presented by Auto Owners Insurance. You can watch live games and BTN original programming on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is available at no extra charge to subscribers who have correct video providers. To learn more, btntogo.com. Also available. In the App Store, you see all four teams here taking in the action. Get to sit in the stands after competing here this afternoon. Penn State on the vault after the first rotation. Go figure. Musser's first. She had a great vault along with the other Whitney and Madison, both 9825 and higher. Solid numbers there. Nebraska on the bars. Laura Evanstad. And 9925. That is actually ties her career high and actually leads the bar competition so far. And the beam results for Ohio State. Sarah Miller, the 9850, the one foot landing. <laughs> one foot landing and solid nine sevens and higher from the rest of the beam rotation. And Minnesota's floor results. We're seeing some very good scores here from all four teams. Janelle Campbell actually currently tied for first with her 9875 for the floor competition. And here are your team results here after one rotation here in the evening session. Nebraska, the number one seed leading the way, but how about the number four seed? Minnesota, 49.150. And Ohio State. And Penn State of 49.1 there. Yeah. Penn State head coach in his second year talked about winning a title with us. He said it, it is like the elephant. I mean, it's not like the elephant in the room because we do address it. We do talk about it. And they've actually had their gymnasts put it in their mission statements. As we look at Dan Kendi, the Nebraska head coach, the number one seed, and obviously the target and the team that most of these other teams here are gunning for here this evening. 11 second place finishes for Penn State, six third place, third place finishes, zero first place finishes. They almost had it against your Michigan team last year. They did, we were talking with Jeff about it. Early uh, yesterday, actually, we had a few mistakes on bars, but finished strong on beam and floor, and Penn State finished on a by rotation. So we knew what we needed on the last rotation last year to finish above them. 
So it came down to the last rotation last year, the afternoon session. This year came down to the last rotation. What in the world can we expect for this evening session? I'm assuming it's going to come down to the last rotation tonight. <laughs> I'm sensing tonight. a pattern here. Your all-around results for the first session here. Kelsey Joannides leading the way there with a 39.4. And coming out of the afternoon, she was actually leading in three of the four events. She had an amazing meet today. She had sticky feet. I think she stuck her vault. Dismount, stuck her beam dismount. <laughs> sticky feet, I like she it. She did. Her teammate, Alina Weinstein, is in second place after the afternoon session. And Casey Williamson over on the floor for Ohio State is where we start for this second rotation. You get Ohio State on the floor, Nebraska on the beam, Penn State on the bars, and Minnesota on the vault. Williamson, one of five seniors for the Buckeyes. Coach said started off slow on floor this year, but has steadily improved throughout the season. Starts off with a jump combination. And leads right into her first tumbling pass. Beautiful double pipe. What about the height on that first pass? Definitely got off of her hands at the right time and used that set to just let it pop. Here she comes with the second pass. Front layout to a front layout fold. That fills the combination requirement of a floor. He and I have been saying today a lot of, oh, that was a nice combination pass. Combination means when there's two flips in the tumbling pass with no hands. Casey Williamson with her final pass. Here she comes. And the big double tuck lands a little bit with her chest down. Has to take that step forward, but overall great three tumbling passes. So in the leadoff spot for Ohio State, we go back to her final pass. Great off of her hands, just doesn't finish the rotation in that double back. Going over to Bars, Crystal Welsh, a freshman for Penn State. Starts off fail handstand, right to a toe up. Welsh, one of the four all-arounders for Penn State, competing in the all-around this year, except for one meet. Nice Tukachev into a blind front double for her dismount. And Brittany Skinner just got on the beam here for Nebraska. She had the flu last week, so didn't even compete. Started off there with a tricky mount. That was a front tuck onto the beam. You have to be dead straight. Little balance check there, but not letting it phase her. She's just continuing, trying to keep the flow of her beamer team. Second team All-American on the beam last year. It's very focused up there. Straddle quarter there has to drop her chest to keep her balance on the beam. here with the gainer pipe stuck dismount. Few small balance checks for Brittany. Headed over back.
back to the bars, it's Alex Stein. Tied for third in the, this event last year. She's a senior. She is a bar specialist for Penn State. Starts off here with a blindfold pirouette. Ginger into an immediate bail. Career high on this event, 9.875. Ends here, blindfold into a double tuck dismo. Looked a little bit like she didn't finish a handstand on that last blindfold. We might see it here, has to kind of re-grip the bar before she goes into it, but she figures it out and pulls a nice double tuck dismount out of it. Going to Dusty Russell moments ago on the vault in the leadoff spot for the Gophers. She made notable upgrades this year, twisting on this vault. She did, she did not twist. She did a Yurchenko layout all last year. <laughs> Beautiful Yurchenko pull. She <laughs> sticks it. You would think she's been doing that her entire life. Right. Take another look. Gets her hands off of the table nicely and sees the ground. When you see it and you know where you are, it's way easier to stick the vault. She's a happy camper. Going over to Janelle Giblin over on the beam from Nebraska. Won the all around last weekend against Iowa State. Three time All American. Winning the all around last weekend made Nebraska have five separate girls this season to win an all around title. It's the first time since 97. <laughs> Pretty jump combination there. I love your answer when people say, who should we watch from Nebraska? And you say, they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. We should watch all of them. <laughs> Certainly a solid addition here to the conference. Cat leap into a side flip. She's very poised up there. Just has the dismount left to go. Here comes a junior. Four and a half dismount and a slight half on the dismount. Heading back over to the floor for Ohio State, it's Taylor Jones. One of two captains here on this team. Season high, 9.875 on the floor. Puts up some big numbers for Ohio State. 2009 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. See a front full punch, front layout. Nice body position in her front tumbling. Two redheads on this Ohio State team. Matches their lead. <laughs> That's with a big double tuck, little step forward. You always try to stick, take a step backwards out of your back tumbling and forwards out of your front tumbling. Headed back to Sierra Thompson from Minnesota on the vault. Just moments ago. Different entry than some other vaults. A front handspring pike front half. And how about this? She tied her career high with that a 9.850, a career high which she set last weekend in Denver. Heading back over to the bars. Madison Merriam. This is where being very tall at 5'8 is good on this event. Good, but she probably had to get used to it. Might be more difficult being that tall. But look at those lines. Beautiful lines. The judges love it. Blind to a Corquina. Very unique pass there and a double tap. We are 
are seeing some high scores here tonight. Take another look at the dismount. Blindfold pirouette. Little feet separation in the air. But altogether, a great bar routine for Penn State. Kylie Sherman, just moments ago for Minnesota. in the air. How about she competed vault once in the last six meets? Here she comes. Beautiful body position in the air, just that slight step that'll get the deduction. A career high for Kylie Sherman, a 9.8 for that vault, heading back over to the beam. Front aerial immediately into her back handspring layout step out. Jesse Dezeal ranked third nationally in the all around as a freshman. Coach Dan says she's a fun girl. She likes to have a good time, but when it comes down to competition, business is business. She just gets in that zone. Yeah, he said, I'll try and figure her out. You know, she's got it down. A freshman who has total vision. Nine Big Ten Freshman of the Week awards. And there's only been 10 weeks to give that award out. Well, she's got three titles here on this beam. Here she is on her piss mount. Two and a half twists, not an easy disc mount there. <laughs> and how about the hug with assistant Heather Brink? You see her dismount. She twists so fast you can't even count them, but that's two and a half twists. There's the hug. Heather Brink, a gymnast at Nebraska. We head over to the bars and check in with Sharia Musser. We talk about coaches complimenting their gymnasts. Jeff Thompson said, this is a kid that every coach dreams to coach. Nice fail right to a toe shoe up to the high bar. Big Tekachi. He has a very pretty dismount coming up. Double layout, stuck landing. She is solid. Such a consistent athlete. One of the favorites to win the all around. Beautiful landing. to the vault in Minnesota. We check in with Kayla Schlechter, a sophomore. Really likes these powerhouse events. Went 9.875 last week. Wow, beautiful vault, huge in the air. Tiny little hop. Slechta getting a season high 9.9 .9 on that vault. Heading over to Emily Wong. The best worker her coach calls her on this event. Try series there, back handspring layout, step out, layout, step out. I saw her do about three of them in warm ups, and they were all perfect, just like that one. Straddle folds, called a popa. Which side? Pretty leap there. Wong has won three titles here on the beam this year. She has her dismount left. She's going to end with a round off double twist. Nails it. <laughs> Nebraska showing why it's the number one seed coming into tonight. Even though the Huskers are the new kids. They are ranked first on every event, not just the top team all around. Picking up Colleen Dean's floor routine here. She had that solid beam performance. Here's her second event. As I mentioned, she'll be the Buckeyes only all around performer. See 
season high of a 9.925. And the second redhead on the team. We actually got a little stats sheet from Carrie Fagan yesterday at practice day. Ends with a great double back for her last tumbling pass. Yeah, one of four children who have red hair, even though none of their parents do. Go figure, huh? How about this for a stat? Two non-redheaded parents having four redheaded children? One in a billion! You can't, you can't make that up. Jamie Schleppenbach from Nebraska is in the anchor spot there for the Huskers. Jamie fell last weekend on this event. Front aerial has to drop her chest there. Back handspring layout, step out very solid. That's a bonus connection there, and she's a little off balance, has to drop her shoulder to the side. She's on her dismount. Front layout pull, and she sticks it. A little shaky up there, but she fought for every skill. Emily Wong before her, now tied for first with a 9-9 on the beam. Schleckenbach will wait for her score as we wrap up the second rotation. We're halfway done here. We've got two more rotations and a champion to be crowned coming up. Be sure to join us in two weeks. Live coverage of the 2012 Big Ten Men's Gymnastic Championships from right here at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. Coverage begins Friday, April 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on BTN. Halfway through here in the evening session, Minnesota on the vault. Kayla Slechta, the 9-9. Was a season high for Slechta. All nine eights and higher for Minnesota on ball. Heading back over to bars for Penn State. Sherea Musser, a 9.85, and right behind her, Whitney Benchko, her teammate. Madison Merriam, Alex Stein, a pair of 9.775s. And the beam. For Nebraska, Emily Wong with the 9-9, tied for first here in the event competition. With Kelsey from Illinois from the earlier session. Kelsey Joannides out of Illinois, and Sarah Miller on the floor there for Ohio State. And Melanie Schaefer both pacing the Buckeyes with a pair of 9-8-7-5s. Take a look at Melanie Schaefer's floor routine. Double pike. Actually tied with Emma Stevenson from the early session as well for first right now. Both Sarah Miller and Schaefer. Melanie Schaefer, the only level 10 gymnast come out of her gym in Pittsburgh. We're Take a look at Sarah Miller there. Out. Team scores here after the halfway mark. Minnesota up by two tenths, it looks like. And you're surprised to that? Nebraska had an awesome lead after that first event. Bars, they went 49-4 something, I think. And I know they did well on beam. So after, after two rotations, 
Lisa Vinton alongside Kylie Kalorik. Minnesota was the number four seed. Didn't even know if it actually would be competing here in the evening session. And now after two rotations, there you go. The Gophers leading the way. They're doing great. They just had some awesome vaults. You saw them. They had a bunch of sticks over there and turned out good for them. They're in second place right now, halfway through. In the third rotation now, the Gophers go to the bars here and Ohio State to the vault, Penn State to the beam and Nebraska to the floor. What are you excited to see here in the third rotation? I think Nebraska on floor. They have some awesome tumbling passes, very dynamic and a lot of talent we're about to see. So Minnesota will be on the bars. Dusty Russell will kick things off for the Gophers. They're in the leadoff spot. Nebraska, you see the Huskers warming up there on the floor. And Penn State warming up on the bean. The difference here from last year, Kylie, let's, we explained it a little bit in the afternoon session. Let's go into it a little bit here for our evening viewership. It's different because all four events going on at the same time and no team really has to sit out this year. Last year, all four events were going at the same time, but there were seven teams. So after you would do bars, you would go and sit in the locker room while everybody else was out here competing. You would sit there for a full rotation, which sometimes takes, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And you just get cold. It's hard to get warmed up again. I think this way, just the girls get to stay warm the whole the entire time. So a new event in the first time that all eight teams here at the Big Ten Conference were together and last night at the banquets, all the Big Ten seniors were together and they all took a little photo op. There's a sportsmanship award. You have one gymnast from each of the eight teams. All that action taking place on Friday, as well as a practice session on Friday in the afternoon. There you see the Michigan Wolverines who are the leaders coming out of that afternoon session. They now have to wait and see what the rest of these top four seeds will do. Two more rotations to go. Starting out with Taylor Jones live on the vault for Ohio State. Chanko full, big block off the table. She twists a little bit early. We talked about this last time we saw her on vault. Just her style, that's how she twists. Take another look. You can see her hands are almost already twist when she's coming off the table. But very dynamic vault. So Taylor Jones with the first vault for Ohio State. We head over to Nebraska with Jamie Schleppenbach. A sophomore, her third event here tonight. Front layout to a front layout full. Very pretty dance and graceful dance. And now the music just changed. Did you like to change your music on the floor? I did. I usually use at least two different songs. Have a nice change of tempo. Schleppenbach, like many gymnasts, dealing with some injury tweaks here and there this season. Front full and a half. That's called a Rudy. And she nailed it. Powerful on the floor. Going back to the uneven bars, Dusty Russell to lead off. Did bars and beam last week against Denver. Career high 9825 on this game. Great in the leadoff position. Blind half into blind full pirouette, immediate fail to handstand. Double tuck dismount. Wow. Get the Minnesota girls rolling on bars <laughs> over there. 
the Gophers have her feet. Gophers have the lead. They'll keep it. Good performances like that. Dusty Russell, a sophomore. Heading back over to Vault. Ali Marone for Ohio State. Or the elite athlete from Canada. Dizzy Lachenko full, slight hop, but very pretty lines in the air. Checking in with Madison Marion there on the beam. First time we won't see her in that fifth spot. She's actually in the second spot here on the beam. Slight balance check there. Had to lift her leg to kind of even things out. This is actually the only event she hasn't won this year. They struggled on beam a little bit last weekend. They didn't have to count any falls, just not the normal numbers that they put up. Here's up, back hamstring layout, step out. Not only do the judges like these long lines on bars, but also on beam. Very graceful, long and pretty lines. Standing five foot eight inches tall. In the front, Vader full dismount. Has to step back a little bit. Take another look at the dismount. Cat lead. A lot of girls do the backwards gainer full. She's throwing her body forwards. A minute ago, Colleen Dean for Ohio State on the vault. Dean does it, your chanko full. Tries to control that landing. <laughs> Salutes and keeps on walking. Here we see hands get off the table nicely. Nice height. Just a small step. And Kayla Slechta. Got on the bars from Minnesota here. Fail to a toe up, and that's a release of Takacha. Blind full pirouette into a double tuck dismount. Minnesota. Man, oh man, Minnesota. They're looking good. Here's her blind full pirouette into the double tuck, knees together. Teammates in the corral <laughs> cheering. You know, Selecta's idol is Shannon Miller. We're not going to tell Sean Johnson that, who is also <laughs> in the building, taking in both sessions. Good friends with Iowa's Jessa Hansen. That's why she's here. Nicole Crowder for Ohio State moments ago, the captain. Tied for second two weeks ago in this event. Nice here, Chanko for. I love her body position in the air. She's not arched and extremely laid out, but she's in a nice hollow shape. Right off the table, when she starts flipping, that body stays in that position the entire time. Crowder recording a 9850 on that vault. So we head back to the floor. In Nebraska, because their judges are conferring on a score there, so we'll have to wait on Janelle Giblin's routine. We should mention, we mentioned this in the afternoon session, that there are more judges here in the Big Ten Championships than there are during the regular season. There are, there are usually only two, and you average the two scores on each event at the Big Ten meet, as well as regionals and nationals, all postseason meets. Four judges, you drop the high score, you drop the low score, and you average the middle two. That way it's most fair all around the board. All right, the last to go for the Buckeyes in the anchor spot in the vault. 
tied for fourth in this event last year is Sarah Miller, a sophomore. Has a high score of a 995. Let's see what she can do. She does a Yurchenko half onto the table, hike front off, overdoes it a little bit, has to, it's so powerful, has to take that extra hop on the landing, half onto the table, gets nice height, nice distance. She has to do a little hop to the side. Sarah Miller recording a 9875 on that vault. Checking back in on the floor routine with Janelle Giblin. Coach Dan says you can't count anyone out. There's a lot of talent, a lot of great teams in the Big Ten. They love their rotation that they're doing. They love that they're the first seed, but that doesn't mean anything. He actually said it was the best draw out there. He said beam is somewhere in the middle and they end on their best event in vault. Now he, he's maybe saying this because he's a number one seed. He felt he thinks he would like it if the top seeds get a phone call instead of a random draw to say where <laughs> you're starting. He's like, I'd like, I'd like a little phone call to say where I'd like to start. We'll see if that ever happens. <laughs> Chest is up. That's the perfect position you need to be in when landing that tumbling pass. Front fold, front pike. As good as Giblin is, she has not won a fourth title yet this year. When you have such a stacked floor line, it's a like little tough, huh? It's a little tough. Janelle Giblin, the junior, the three-time All-American. Moments ago, Lucy Ennis on the bars for Minnesota. Rebounded nicely in Denver last weekend after a tough outing two weeks ago. 9.85 last week in Denver, I believe. Starts off here blind, Pipe Yeager, Overshoot, nice combination. Gotta be quick off your hand. He finishes here with a double layout. Dismount, little step. Great bar team. They call her powerful and beautiful on this. Little leg separation, but uses that to flip herself around in that double layout. So the senior competes at the bars for the last time in her career as a gopher. Minnesota again competing with the lead after two rotations. The only team, the gophers, the only team, like I said, not to have a Big Ten all-conference on. Heading over to the floor, Emily Wong. Nebraska. Already has put up some big numbers today on bars and beam. Huge double pike to open with. First team all Big Ten. Season high of 9925 on this event. Layout for her combination tumble pass. Now we get 
the music change into the slow, dramatic part of her floor routine. But it picks up quickly. It does. <laughs> it's all it takes. It's about, you know, six to eight seconds of the slow stuff to catch your breath. Ends here with front handspring from Rudy. Emily Wong. One of five all-arounders. <laughs> Daryl Konsevic, a portion of her routine here on the beam. Front aerial to a split jump. A two-time Junior Olympic national champion on this event. Nice gainer, full dismount. Take another look at the senior. Back hamstring into the gainer full. Slight shuffle of the feet. Look at the crowd who showed up here in the evening session. Like I said, we got all four teams here this afternoon. Minnesota leading after two sessions. The storylines, Nebraska going for back-to-back -back conference championships that would be with two different conferences. 1,203 recorded here for the evening session attendance. Head back over to Bean here, Sherea Musser. How about a 9-9 and a 9-8-5 for your work so far tonight? Shreya's career high on beam 9.95. She's ranked first on this event in the Big Ten. That handspring layout, step out. First in the first in the Big Ten and fourth in the country. Her coach Jeff Thompson says, I have seen tears from her in two years, just twice. Sometimes I see other tears twice from other people twice in a day. <laughs> Everybody's wired differently in their emotions, so. He says she is wired automatically. She sees a green flag and just goes. Nice front aerial there. And a gainer full stuck dismount. Beautiful routine from Sharia. Here we see the cartwheel kick to the gainer pole. She was just solid all the way through. She is solid. Over on the floor, a moment ago, Jesse Duzeal, the freshman for Nebraska. Now her teammate, Emily Wong, reported a 9-9 just before her here on the floor. Now she leads the floor competition with that score. Very difficult pipe pull in for her first tumbling pass. Handspring two and a half, punch front. Just loaded with difficulty in this routine. What kind of composure and poise do you see in her as a freshman? Coach says she's just very comfortable in all of the routines she's doing. If you're comfortable with every skill you're putting out there, then you're gonna hit them. She, she did elite, I'm sure she can do a lot more skills than she has in her routines right now. She's comfortable with them. Makes it easier to compete like that. She won this event six times so far this year. Most of any event for her. She gears up for one more pass. Finishes with a nice double pike. Well, that was moments ago for Jesse Dezeal. And here is her teammate. We go live now to the senior. From the freshman to the senior, this is Laura Evanstad. Leading the bars right now with a 9925. I gotta tell you, Kylie, we aired their senior 
night against Iowa State last weekend, and it was emotional. She gets a standing ovation. It was her last event, the last time she would compete in Nebraska. And her head coach is normally a little stoic, got a little emotional. I was there talking with him yesterday, and she's a great senior leading the team this year, and it's going to be sad to see her go next year. She's got some competition, though. Jesse Dezeal just recording a 9-9. That means teammates Wong and Dezeal right now pacing the way on the floor. Last weekend, Laura went 9-9-2-5. We'll see if she can match that today. to see if it's better than a 9-9 like her two teammates reported. See her last tumbling pass here from Hansbrick. Front Ruby throws her head back. Cool move there. <laughs> and there she gets a hug from her coach, Dan Kendig. Says thank you very much for all your work. We got one more station to go, folks. Anticipation building. Who will be our next Big Ten champion? BTN Women's Gymnastics is brought to you by Alpha Factor. Compete with confidence. Talking about someone who competes with confidence. How about our own Kylie Caloric? Little catalog shoot. Look at <laughs> look at how serious you look. The little Confidence. photo shoot for, for Alpha Factor. Man, you are big time. <laughs> I had to watch a little tie I like tie this rug. one. Like the the hair uh, blowing in the wind. Speaking of big time, um, Sean Johnson, I think, has done a couple photo shoots here. Thanks for joining us. The reason yeah, why you're definitely. here, you're good buddies with Jessa Hansen from Iowa. I am. We've grown up together since I was like five, and she's been like my sister through everything. So. Well, you got to watch her compete. What was the advice that you gave her after the afternoon session? Uh, I don't think I gave her advice. I think she's been giving me advice. Oh, she's on. like the big sister, but I was, I can't watch her. I get so nervous. Do I was like really? sitting there like this. I was like shaking. But. More nervous than when you compete? Oh, yeah. I, I can't watch it. I can do it. I just can't watch it. So. We did a little split screen of you when she was going on oh, floor. Gosh. We had you in the audience cheering and yeah. serious face. And yeah, I get, I do. I get so nervous. I just, I watched her ever since she was, I think, seven when I started. And I've looked up to her and idolized her. And just seeing how far she's come, it's, it's amazing. Wow. An Olympian looking up to Jessa Hansen. Have you told her that? Um, I don't know if I've told her that, but I'm sure well, she's Well, now she knows. If she's, if she's <laughs> watching, she goes back yeah. and watch. You're going to join us here for the fourth rotation. We appreciate that. But right now, we're going to look at the results here for the third rotation. And we're going to start with Ohio State there on the vault. Sarah Miller, a very solid performance with a 9-8-7-5. Allie Marone, Colleen Dean, and Nicole Crowder reporting a 9-8-5. Over to Minnesota on the bars. Lucy Ennis with a 9-8. Dusty Russell, Kayla Schlechta, pair of 9-7-5s. And Sierra Thompson there right with them with a 9-7-5. Over to the beam for the Nittany Lions, Sherea Musser. Another top performance here, a 9-8-5. Cassidy Stouter, Whitney Benchko, Daryl Konsevic. All right there with him. We're going to have an exciting fourth rotation as we look at the final results there. What's key about this, Wong, Dezeal, and Evanstead, all three teammates, they now lead the floor competition with those nine nines they recorded there after the third rotation. Your team story here. Minnesota was leading after two rotations, and Nebraska actually jumped over the Gophers here after three rotations. 
And remember, the storyline here is that the Michigan Wolverines are in the stands and watching. They competed here in the afternoon. Here they are here earlier today with the leaders of the pack coming out of the afternoon. They got to sit and watch to see what happens, Kylie. They do. I'm sure they're twiddling their thumbs, waiting to see how this all plays out in this last rotation. It's going to be an exciting one. Sean, what was your impression of Michigan watching them this afternoon? Uh, they're very clean and very consistent. I, I didn't see anybody miss anything. So com what I saw. compare what you saw with Michigan to what you see here tonight. Oh my goodness. Uh, I feel like I see a little more difficulty this afternoon, but you know, consistency was what I saw this morning, which is impressive. I mean, you see a couple falls every once in a while, but people are really consistent. So far, here's the all around Zotes. Now this is just for session two. Emily Wong of Nebraska actually leading the way there. Sherea Musser, one of the favorites, and Janelle Gimlin, so two Huskers in the top three there. And Kylie, let me ask you, Nebraska is ending here on the vault, and, and we had talked to both coaches where Jeff Thompson actually said, Nebraska has an edge because they end with the vault. We have to end on the floor. What would be the mentality? Nebraska has a lead going into this fourth and final rotation. What's the mentality here for the Huskers? It's their best event. They know that they can perform well on vault, and it's so quick. You know, it's the shortest event by far of all four, and as soon as they're done, they just kind of get to sit there and sit back and wait and see how everybody else finishes out. We'll have to see if the Huskers can finish it out here. When trying to go for back-to-back -back championships, if that happens, it would be the first time since 2002, the 2003 season. Sean Johnson, great, gracious enough to join us here for this fourth and final rotation. When you watch college gymnastics, what, what impressions stand out to you? Um, besides the overall impression that they're all just genuinely loving every second of it, I love the spirit and how much fun they're having, but they really just show you what gymnastics is about. I mean, they're doing clean routines, difficult routines, and having a great time doing it. So you got any plans this summer? Are you going to be busy? <laughs> um, hopefully. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be in London. I mean, I'm working for it. But. Yeah. Well, good luck with all of that. Thank you. It's one day at a time, and you never know what's going to happen, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. A change on the ball here for the Huskers. they Evanstad. Starting things off for Nebraska. You know, we see a lot of Yurchenko foals, but not a Yurchenko. She actually just does a half on to the table. I feel like that's even harder than a Yurchenko. <laughs> Nobody yeah. does those no. anymore. Sierra Thompson over on the beam for Minnesota. Competed in the all around all but two meets. Thompson's career high, 9.775. Great in the leadoff position for the team, very consistent. First person from a high school to earn a college scholarship. Thompson, one of those up and coming rookies here we see tonight. Tell me what you see from her, uh, Sean. Uh, rock solid. <laughs> it doesn't seem like she's got any nerves right now. Especially, you said she's a freshman. I mean, it's extremely impressive. She's not shaking, not having any wobbles. Maybe a little in there, but she <laughs> saved it. <laughs> it always happens. It's the broadcaster's yeah, right. jinx. You can't <laughs> escape it. We did it a couple times today already. <laughs> that stuck landing. That's why she's in the leadoff position. Kylie, how impressed are you with the Gophers tonight? You saw my reaction after two rotations when they were in the lead. I mean, the fourth seed right now, we just saw them a couple weeks ago. And they looked great to me, but with the hype of Nebraska coming in and Penn State's been doing so well, I guess they just kind of pushed them behind, but they look awesome. 
Over to the vault with Brittany Skinner from Nebraska. Remember, she had the flu last week, didn't even compete. She's healthy now, and here she comes. First team All-American on vault. Nice vault. Now what's wrong with that? <laughs> we'll take another look, ladies. It's a nice block off the table. Sean? I mean, I can't find anything. Oh, come on! <laughs> You're maybe, not a tough judge. Maybe she judge. was a little piked at the end, but I mean, she she pretty much stuck it, and it looked looked really clean. You're not a tough judge at I'm all. I'm not. I'm, you know, <laughs> you just love everyone. I don't like the tough judges myself. So <laughs> we'll see what the judges give her over there. Well, Nebraska again pacing the way here after three rotations. First year here in the conference. Trying to win that Big Ten championship. Going back to the beam, Lucy Ennis of Minnesota. A solid performance on the bars, recording that 9-8. I believe Lucy only competed beam the last two weeks in competition. She's a senior. She knows this is her last routine here as a college gymnast. Oh. Tough series, just a little bit off. She almost ran out of beam. She couldn't go backwards anymore to save herself. Those are one of those passes where if you get off on the first scale, then you're off on all of them. So how do you collect yourself here to finish out strong, Sean? It's hard, you know, falling on that first pass is kind of, it breaks your confidence, but if you can just kind of start new and start over, I mean, it's just about focusing in, but. Looks like she's getting back from it pretty easy. She's only the second one to go, so four. Girls from Minnesota still have to compete on the beam, hoping to do her team better than this, where they don't have to count this ball. And this dismount. Finished up strong after that fall. A moment ago, we go back to the vault and Emily Wong of Nebraska, ranked fifth nationally in the all around. What'd you like out of it? Her block. I mean, she goes straight up, does a pull, and then opens up before landing. I mean, I think that's what all of them should look like. Flares out and just finds it. Wong tying her career high with a 9925. She was in the lead in the all around going into vault. I don't know, did that seal the deal for Emily? I don't know if it sealed the deal. We still have it have It might have shut out Kelsey Joanna Dees, though. We crunched the numbers on that all-around race. Janelle Giblin here. Moments ago on the ball for Nebraska. First in the Big Ten on this event. Again, very clean, very nice. They all have an enormous block off the vault. They flare out before they land, and they all stick it. I mean, what does that provide you when you get an enormous block? It gives you enough time to you can twist, open, spot your landing, see the landing, and I mean, it gives you all the chance in the world to stick it. What'd so. you see there, Kylie? Exactly, it gives you some thinking time in the air to know exactly where you are. Five vault titles so far this season for Janelle Giblin. She's a junior. One of those five all-arounders that Nebraska is sending to competition. Moments ago, Casey Williamson for Ohio State on the bars. She's a senior. Her last event, her second event of the night. Career high 9875 on bars. 
starts off blind Cole Bale to a toe shoot. And here's up for double layout dismount. Nice double layout. So Casey Williamson ending her college career there in style for the senior. Amber Hammerschmidt of Minnesota just hopped up on the beam. We're gonna look in on her routine here. Another senior. Her only event tonight, she had a career high last week at Denver. We just got a score for Casey Williamson tying her career high there on bars, a 9875. She has gorgeous lines. Very pretty lines, that tall line that the judges love. And a front walkover too, that's a unique skill. Where's the back brace there for extra support? Combination there. I didn't see that one coming. I thought she was going to stop after the third one. In a moment ago, we head back to the vault in Nebraska. Jamie Schleppenbach, a sophomore, first team All American on the vault last year. Here she comes right at you. Just like the others. They are just nailing these vaults one after the other. Long strides down the runway, gets her momentum going, and opens up for the landing to stick it. Amazing. Well, a 9-9-2-5, the judges liked it too. You ladies could be judges. <laughs> Sean would be giving out 10. Yeah, I'd be all all the time. <laughs> she says they're all perfect. <laughs> to the bars, we check in with Ohio State. And the anchor on this spot is Taylor Jones, the senior and a captain. Trying to, the most important part. Yeah, trying to end the Buckeyes night with an exclamation point. Clean routine all around, a little step on that dismount there. Live on the beam, Kylie Sherman of Minnesota. She has done beam and floor for the Gophers every meet all season long. Career high, 9.875 on this event. She has a very difficult series coming up. Very nice. How difficult was that, Sean? Um, extremely. I mean, especially when you're connecting three skills together. Like I said earlier, if you're even off an inch, you're off in the entire thing. So. Not a lot of girls can tumble like you, Sean, on beam. It's, but they try, right? <laughs> they do a good job. <laughs> I wouldn't give myself that much credit. I know you won gold, but is it your favorite event? It is. For some reason, the, the daredevil factor of it thrills me. And tumbling on a four inch beam is awesome. Very difficult this one as well. First double tuck I've seen tonight. And the girls know what it takes. The pressure's on for them to stay on that beam right now. Nice set, a little low chest on the landing. A little under-rotated. All right, we head over to Madison Merriam. On the floor for Penn State. Well, Kyla, we talked about her long lines here all night. What advantage does that provide her here in this event? Just showing the judges those lines. I mean, she's, she 
I don't even know if it's an advantage. She has to use those lines and keep everything squeezed from head to toe. I mean, I'm short, and I didn't have, you know, as much of that body to, to deal with and think about. Judges do love the artistry lines, though, and she's got it. What stands out to you about her routine so far? Um, her style? She's just easy to watch. I mean, she she moves great. She's got great tumbling. She's that perfect balance between artists, artistry and power. And she's got huge tumbling and great dance. She's been putting up good numbers for Penn State on the floor all year. with Sharia Musser, last year at least. I guess they didn't get along, but now they're not roommates this year, and they could be the best of friends. <laughs> he didn't say they didn't get along. He well. said since they've moved out, <laughs> they are best friends. I interpreted Currently. that as not getting along. <laughs> oh, I, just, I don't think that. <laughs> Miriam wrapping things up, and she will have her former roommate as the anchor on that event here coming up. Take a look at one of Madison's passes here. I believe it's the first tumbling pass. Rudy into the split jump. And a lot of colors in those ribbons in their hair. Dusty Russell on the beam. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. That looks painful. <laughs> Shows some nice flexibility. We're not going to see that from you anytime soon, um, Sean? Probably not. <laughs> it's a risk to do that for your mount, though. <laughs> nice flight series, back handspring layout step out. Fighting for it, fighting for it, she saves it. it. Looked like she was off there for a little bit. Nice leap series there. Shows the flexibility again that we saw early on. Interesting choreography to her beam routine. There's something different about it. She does a lot of moves that you don't see very often. Preparing for her dismount. It's definitely a day. She covered from that, from that wobble pretty well. She did. Everything besides that looked awesome. We head back live to Sherea Musser. Oh, this is going to be fun. Went 995 last week. Wow. Very controlled, very high. It's definitely I like what her coach said about her. It's like she watches her own movie. This is what Sharia looks like on the floor. And then she goes and performs it. Very Do a little thing. replay through your head before you go. Pull and a half punch layout front into a scale. I don't know if you could see before this tumbling pass, you could see Nebraska just sitting in their corral back there. They're all done with vault. They're just waiting around. Shereya's ranked first in the Big Ten with Laura and Jesse Dezeal from Nebraska. Your impressions when you see her in person here, Sean. One of the best all-arounders here in the country in the conference. So controlled, so sure of herself. I mean, you watch her tumbling, and it's like no matter what, she knows where the landing is. And it makes her gymnastics easy to watch. Shereya Musser, let's take another look at that last pass. It looked like she was almost a little under-rotated. 
opened up a little early, but controlled enough to save it. A few moments ago, we'll go back and look at the anchor for Nebraska on the vault, the freshman phenom, Jesse Dezeal. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Jessie's also been competing a full and a half this whole year. Looks like she watered down just for championships. I mean, it, it doesn't look needed. It's perfectly stuck. I mean, it's one girl for another. Open body in the air, exactly what the judges are looking for. Dezeal recording a 9.925 on that. We head back over and join Shannon Golich here on the beam. She is the final competitor here. I'm talking about both sessions all day. This is it. They do have a fall earlier in the beam lineup, so she needs to nail this routine in order to drop that score. Kylie, this is her favorite event here as beam. Not a bad way to end it. Not at all. Shannon Golich ending things in style, and I think we ended things in style here. We had an extra commentator here. Thank you, Sean Johnson, for joining us. My it was pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you. I know it was a pleasure for her. I know, we have to get a picture. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, yes. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Definitely. We'll be back to wrap things up and award the champions coming up. City, we are just moments away from awarding a team title and the individual titles on all the events, and that includes the all-around. Apparatus results of that fourth and final rotation. Nebraska, you are the Here's the vault results. Therefore, Nebraska, three nine nine two fives, and Kylie and Sean Johnson were awfully impressed, right, Miss Clore? We would have. We said if we were the judges, they would have had high scores. And here's the bars here for the Buckeyes. Casey Williamson, a nine eight seven five. Therefore, Ohio State. And beam results for the Gophers. Amber Hammerschmidt. The top score there for Minnesota. And Madison Merriam, Sharia Musser, Whitney Benchko, all performing there on the floor for Penn State. And your team winner, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The new kids on the block come in for their first Big Ten championships and walk away as the Big Ten champion. The Huskers winning back-to-back -back last year, Big 12 conference champs, and this year now the Big Ten conference champs. And so that's a good reason to bring in the head coach, Dan Kednick. Thanks for joining us. What were your impressions here tonight? Well, I'll tell you what, it sure wasn't easy. There's some uh, great talent here, and um, I, my team made it hard. You know, we had some uh, not so great routines early in some of the lineups, but man, did they finish out the lineups really well. And I mean, I'm really pleased with everything we did. We came in here yesterday for practice and had a great day. Today was even better. And we came into competition, we started out on bars. That's very, very good for us. And then we go to beam, and, and to be fair to the beam judges, they were tight, but they were tight all day for everybody. So I applaud them for being consistent. But um, and then we went to floor, and we had a little trouble with our second girl, but man, did our next board pick it up. And we vaulted lights out. And so I'm just proud of this group. They've, um, they've delivered all year long on the road, and uh, they delivered again today, and I'm so proud of them. Well, you liked your rotation setup, you told us on Friday. So, and it panned out for you. Congratulations. Thank you so very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank we appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Congratulations. The
The awards are not done here for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. There they are with the hardware. You're looking at your 2011 and 2012 Big Ten champions, Kylie. They looked great. They deserved it. The Husker Awards are not done. Emily Long coming up big time as the all-around champ here as well, recording a 39.6. She was on tonight. I think everyone was focused on some of the other big name all-around, all-rounders, and she was on fire. She was under pressure on every event and did awesome on every event. Well, you see where Emily ranks with some of the others there, Jesse Dezeal. Sharia Musser finishing second and third. And joining us now is the all around champ, Emily Wong. Congratulations. What was your mentality going in here tonight? Thank you. And it was just to have fun, go out there and just do my best and do it for my team. And we did really well tonight. First year in the Big Ten and Big Ten champions. What does that mean to you and your team? It's crazy. I don't even know. It's an amazing feeling. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> what is practice like in Nebraska? You guys, I was joking with Kylie. She says everyone on Nebraska's team is almost good. What is it like for you guys to compete day in and day out with the kind of athletes? <laughs> it's fun. We go to the gym each and every day, wanting to get better and better each day. And we come out and perform it just like we do in practice. It's awesome. Tell me what it means to take home the first place trophy here the first year Nebraska's in the Big Ten. It's amazing, <laughs> incredible. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> She's speechless. She is speechless. <laughs> how are you going to use this championship win to help you down the road at regionals and nationals? It just gives us confidence going in that we can do it, and we're <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> I don't think she's going to wipe that smile on her, off her face anytime soon. Congrats again. Emily Wong, our all-around champ, will wrap things up here from Iowa City when we return. There you look at the final results there. Nebraska takes home the hardware and the Big Ten championship. First year for the Huskers. And they walk away as champions with the Buckeyes finishing second. And joining us now is the head coach, Carrie Fagan. And coach, congratulations on the second place finish. Tell me how your team performed based on what you wanted them to do coming into tonight. Um, I think, you know, starting on beam, we were a little nervous, had some wobbles that we typically don't have. Um, floor, the same thing. I didn't think we were as sharp as we have been in the past couple weeks. So it was hard. You know, we were last after two events and, you know, kind of keep the kids energized and ready for those last two events. So I'm really, really happy with the way the girls performed on Vault and Bars. Carrie, how do you, use a, do you use a performance like this and take it with you to regionals and nationals? What are your expectations down the road this season? Well, that's exactly what I said to my team after we finished was, you know, this is a big meet, high pressure, big competition. You know, we need to learn from those wobbles, learn from those little bobbles that we had on floor and get sharper for regionals. Take me back to that moment that you were talking about when your team was not where you wanted it to be after two rotations. What did you tell them at that halfway mark that works here in the last two rotations? You know, my favorite thing about this team is, is they stick to the plan. And our plan every meet is to hit 24 routines. And whether we're first, last, like all we can do is hit our routines. And I just said, you know, this meet is not even close to being over. There's a lot of gymnastics to do. But we need to go out and hit these last two events. You were picked, I think, fourth in the preseason. I, I remember I told you that. You didn't even know where you were picked. I don't think you cared, but you finished. When it counts, you finished as runners up. So congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Head Thanks, coach, Carrie, Carrie Fagan. Now let's take a look at the first team. All Big Ten selections. They're decided by the RQS. Basically with the, the top three RQS scores of, of the different events, and then the top three RQS scores of the all around. That's where these first team All Big Tens and second team All Big Ten teams are decided, Kylie. The first year that it's really been decided by an RQS and not a vote. Right, they did it different this year. I've heard a couple of the coaches say it might change a little bit next year as well, just based on the results. And we have the final 
awards for the end of the year awards and here they are also these are voted by the coaches voted on Friday your freshman of the year Jesse Dezeal of Nebraska your gymnast of the year Sharia Musser and the coach of the year Dan Kendig and why not because as Nebraska Cornhuskers take home the hardware and the championship congrats to Nebraska and what a fun year it was.